Guys, what's going on? Zach Evanesh here from ZachStrength.com. We're at the Underground Strength Gym and uh, finishing up a long day here. Coached athletes during the day. I coach five, six groups by day and then three groups in the afternoon. So I've always said as a coach, kind of the best learning that you get is with your boots on the ground. You're able to take the things that you've learned from a book or watching VHS tapes like I did back in the day uh, podcasts, things of that nature, and you're able to put them together. So I want to talk about a couple of things that I'm seeing with the athletes and as a coach or parent, why that's important to you. So number one, it's not just the younger athletes, it's even the upperclassmen. Some of them are simply not strong. And one of the most dangerous things for an athlete is to be weak, to be physically unprepared and mentally unprepared. And I harp on this all the time because I never know who's watching or when you're watching, but I say, listen, there's no excuse to struggle on calisthenics. There's no gym required, there's nothing required. Squats, push-ups, lunges, sprinting, jumping, those are great. Pull-ups, okay, not everybody's got a pull-up bar, but you could get to a uh, playground and find pull-up bars or monkey bars and work those pull-ups. So that being said, you know, that stuff can make you very strong. The, th the thing is, it's not gonna work if you just do a few half-hearted sets. It's gonna require a lot of work. Prop this bad boy up. It's gonna require putting in the time, the effort. So you can't just do, uh, I'm gonna do 10 reps here. I'm gonna get you know 200 today. You gotta go and, and put, in, uh, put in the work. You gotta do 25 squats, 25 push-ups, you know, do four, five, six sets of that. Then you got a sprint, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sets of hundred yard sprints, or you know, near where I used to live in Edison, there was an area called the Heights, and there was this other section of streets off Grandview Ave. If anybody remembers that, the the hill must have been about a quarter mile, but it was so damn steep, it was brutal. So hill sprints, that stuff's excellent. On the weekends, go to empty parking lots when things might be shut down. Put the car in neutral, shut the engine off, get behind it, do truck and car pushing. And you don't look, of course, my gym is set up for excellence. It's, you know, it has a purpose. I mean, the writing is all over the wall. Those of you who have gym equipment at home, it's not just what you do, but it's how you do it. So I found that a lot of kids don't have squat racks, like these are squat racks here. So they're not training their legs. And I can't imagine going six months without working your legs, without squatting. Weak legs have a real negative impact on athlete conditioning, athlete power. Of course, strength is the foundation of power and even conditioning. And then also it has a negative impact on their mindset. Their attitude is, or their mental fortitude, their grit is not very high. Why? Because they start getting fatigued. They start overthinking things. They start questioning their preparation. And that being said, an athlete who has confidence is going to be a more dominant athlete. An athlete who's second guessing himself or herself, we're in, we, got, we got problems, they're going to struggle. So you gotta have strong legs, you gotta squat, but you have to do things correctly. Sometimes kids think that they could train at home and you know, especially the beginning of kind of when we were able to open in mid-June, kids were like, yeah, I've been training at home all this time but then they were getting destroyed from our most basic, introductory, simplest, easiest workouts, which told me, hmm, you're training, you think you're training, but you're actually not training. You're kind of what we call working out. You do a set, you check your phone, you check your phone for five minutes, then you do a little this, a little that, and then you only do what's you like to do. You like to bench, so you're doing a lot of benching, but what about legs? What about back? What about specific ab? Whereas, you know, the, the people who are into the fads and the gimmicks, you say core strength. There's the right way to do things, okay? It's like, it's like a lot of things. You can, we can all do the same thing, but it's how it's done, right? We all can grill up a steak, but why do certain restaurants have great steaks, great burgers, great fish, great lobster, if you're down the shore, whatever that is. So it's not just what we're doing, it's how we're doing it. And then the other thing is the interaction I'm able to have with the athletes day in and day out, I could guide them with nutrition, with lifestyle, with mindset, with talking about excellence, not just in athletics, 
Excellence in academics, excellence in your social life, hanging around the right people, making the right choices. And so when you're training alone, you miss that because what you can't really get great alone. And we say this all the time, wrestling is an individual sport. Well, then do it on your own. Have no training partner, no coach, and show us how good you could get. You know, you have to get into the we, not me thing. So when it comes down to it, there's no excuse to not be great at calisthenics. Being weak is extremely dangerous. Sports are dangerous, but being weak is very dangerous. So if your son or daughter's in middle school, get them to a qualified strength and sport performance expert. Don't just go to whoever's convenient, closest to home and cheapest. You're saving money, but your child is the most important investment. At least that's my opinion. And then ultimately, the overall umbrella of excellence, the whole recipe. You just can't get it on your own. So if you wanna be great, you need to get great coaching, you need to be in a great environment. And I would say this is for middle school, high school, college athletes. It's why we see um, post-collegiate wrestlers uh, going to different regional training centers because they wanna be around maybe a more competitive environment or maybe there's somebody who is a training partner that's gonna push them to another level, but environment and atmosphere and coaching, great coaching, those are the transformative factors in who becomes great versus who is just good. That's it, guys. Zach Abnesh, undergroundstrengthgym.com. Go to zachstrength.com. If you're following us from all around the world, we've got free training courses. If you're in New Jersey, you go to undergroundstrengthgym.com. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Please share with a friend. Peace.